Suffer in succotash, son. I'm here to declare, declare it's time for the Royal Rumble. You best believe that. The Dropkick. It's the Dropkick post Royal Rumble talk podcast thing. Kyle Sherman, how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. I haven't slept very well for obvious reasons. So don't ask how I'm doing then. So anyway, Royal Rumble. I don't care how you're doing. You kept me awake right. all that night. I'd yeah, already I... known who'd won before I'd even woke up in the morning. I got drunk watching the Royal Rumble. Yeah, it helped ease the pain, which people <sighs> will learn about coming up now. Great. Did you watch the pre-show? I did not, no. I, to be honest, I didn't even watch the Ascension match. I think I just fast-forwarded it in my hang- angst to get to the good stuff. Right. Uh, in the pre-show, you know, New Day came out first, and the crowd were like, you know, they were loving it a bit. They were chanting back New Day. And then as soon as the wee-woo-wee-woo Cesaro music hit, people realized, you know, oh, wait, it's New Day versus Cesaro and Tyson Kidd, and people just kind of groans. Is that but, uh, not a matchup that people want? Nobody cares about the New Day. People, the, the crowd really popped for Cesaro and uh, kids. Yeah, that, uh, that's not surprising. It, what was surprising is Adam Rose came out in a Bullet Club-like t-shirt. Weird. And I and I was freaking out at that. And then I saw that Cesaro was wearing a Brass Ring Club shirt. And oh my, I just burst into <laughs> laughter. That was amazing. Uh, what does that even mean? Uh, in New Japan Pro Wrestling, there's a group of American wrestlers over there called the Bullet Club that ah, like right. terrorize all the Japanese wrestlers. <laughs> so basically, they're wearing shirts that reference uh, Japanese wrestling, yeah. which is like totally not allowed. <laughs> that's but, pretty cool. Uh, other than the shirts, that's pretty much the only decent thing about this pre-show match. I mean, yeah. it was a lot better than most of the matches on the card. Like the crowd really loved Cesaro and Kids, and when when they won the match, the crowd like were loving it. Nobody really cared for the new day. Like Xavier Woods was like banging on the uh, uh, side of the ring, trying to get a chance going for the new day, and he was just shouting new. All, all the crowd were going new day sucks, new <laughs> day sucks in time. With as he was patting the mat, it was pretty good. It seems almost racist. I don't really get it. It's they're, such a weird gimm- like get for it, isn't it? Very like stereotypical black person. What was weird is at, on the pre-show like chat after the match. All of the white people on there were asking Booker T, who is black, whether he likes the New Day and if he was rooting for them to win. <laughs> Which, uh, Again, racist. I don't get it. How'd you get yeah. away with that? I, I, I don't, don't know. know. Is it racist for black people to talk about other black people? Probably not. Probably I don't not. know. So, like, I'm pretty sure the white people on there weren't like, oh yeah, I was rooting for Cesaro and Kid because, you know, they're white too. No, that seems pretty weird though. Like, yeah. it, I don't necessarily think the premise seems racist. It just seems so what people outside of America, I think, whose view like religious black Americans as. It's uh Yeah. It's, it's just weird. It's a weird get. But um Yeah, do you want to talk about the old age outlaws versus the Ascension? No, because Your that I actually match? did fast forward that. So you know at the beginning of the <laughs> thing where it does all that weird montage of like previous rumbles or whatever. I was just yeah. skipping through that until I saw the Miz. So I just completely missed <laughs> that outlaws thing. I was that part right. of the pre show. That that was the first match on the card. Nope, completely so, missed it. Uh, How long was it? Like yeah. two minutes long? See, I don't know, right? The Stone Age Outlaws came out. I have no interest in them, but they were, you know, the crowd were loving them. They were there chanting along with their, you know, catchphrases. And then it was Illuminati time as the Ascension came down. They replayed the Ascension, the Ascension burial that happened on Monday Night Raw. Uh, I saw... <laughs> In the crowd, I saw a 2004 Never Forget sign, which is referenced in the uh, Royal Rumble that Chris Benoit won. Oh, and right. that, that, that gave me a chuckle. I'm pretty sure the guy was thrown out for that. Yep, I'd imagine so. Uh, wow. So I, I went for a piss, and when I came back, the Ascension had won. So I don't know anything that happened other than, like, <laughs> <laughs> other than like at the beginning of the match, Billy Gunn did, like, an arm drag to one of the Ascension people, and then, like, you still got it, chance started, like, echoing through the arena. It's like, fuck off, it's an arm drag. <laughs> so, yeah, that's... Riveting match, <laughs> then. It really was very interesting. Attention. Yep. And so let's get to the stuff that actually matters. The Miz. Ah, oh, Miz and Miz, Miz Dow. Dow. Yeah. 
the crowd loved Miz and Miz Dow. Oh, like I loved they always that. do. That was really fun. I enjoyed it. Like, it was good. They, know, they came out to asshole. massive cheers. And then uh, then the Samoans came out. Oh, yeah. And people, I, I don't like them. It's funny that <laughs> I couldn't remember who they were against. So I was going to like introduce the match, and I couldn't remember who they actually were facing off against. Yeah. So memorable. The, uh, we want Miz Joe start chance started immediately. Yeah. Which is awesome, and it, the, it was kind of like the ongoing theme throughout this entire match. They they did the spot where Miz Dow, like, Miz, it looks like Miz is going to tag in Miz Dow, and the crowd are loving it. Oh, yeah. And then Miz pulls his hand away, and then Miz da- we want Miz Dow chance start again. <laughs> See, I actually think that, like, the Miz is pretty good. I don't know, I actually enjoyed watching him, like, I don't know, I thought he was good in the ring. He didn't look in, shit. In kayfabe terms, the Miz is one of the best wrestlers in WWE right now because he fights tag matches on his own without using his partner. Yeah, he was, he was pretty impressive. But yeah, I think you're right about what you said in the last episode about them leading to like a breakup or something. Because oh, Miz and Miz though. Yeah, that's going to be really sad when that happens. But I think See, it's inevitable. When, when we get to the Rumble, I'll talk about how they fucked up Miz and Miz Dow, Miz Dow's <laughs> entrance. But uh, yeah, the the match is just like every. Mi- Uso match that I've watched, the Usos have to get in their super kick spots and their, you know, dives, the Uso crazy dives to the outside, which they ended up botching and one of the Usos landed right on his head on outside. It's pretty funny. Yeah. Was, yeah. Uh, my only notes for this match is that Miz Dow looked really happy all the time. <laughs> it's like oh, literally uh, all I have written down for that. <laughs> uh, I, I seem to have a lot more notes. That's some that I had to remove the next morning, but, yeah. um, not before I yeah. managed to copy it all to a Word document, you didn't. Uh, I got all that shit in its original form. Anyway, uh, yeah, <laughs> WWE seem to have a theme with their pay-per-views, which is, fuck your finisher, because one of the Usos takes, like, two skull-crushing finales, and then they still kick out and win. <laughs> so yeah, the Usos won. I, I have in my notes here, I actually let out a loud, oh, fuck off, moan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. It's yeah, like they the were way... just boring, aren't they? Like, the I don't way, know if I yeah. just see that now because of what we've talked about, but yeah. I, they're just the not way, to watch. The way I see the Usos, it, or... Yeah, the way I saw this match happening is, if Miz and Miz Dow won, then they wouldn't break up. But if Miz and Miz Dow lost, it probably means they're going to break up for the Royal Rumble. Yeah. But we'll talk about that more later. Oh, yeah. Uh, Can't wait. After this match, there was an awful... Uh, little segment of them trying to shield WWE Immortals, All which right. is pretty funny. I, miss, I fast-forwarded everything that wasn't the matches. The only note I have for it is, time to shill Immortals, and then in brackets, lol, 3 out of 5, Kyle Shimon 2015. <laughs> yeah, that game's not, uh, it's alright. 3 out of 5. Would Mediocre. you say it's as alright as the next match, which was Paige and Natalia versus no. the Bella Twins? Oh, fuck it, that was bad. Did you not think? <laughs> Like, I didn't want to watch Natalia get fucking the shit beaten out of her for 20 minutes. My my first note here is piss break time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember much of this. Most of my notes aren't actually about the match at all. It's kind of just about Paige. Uh, Why does this not surprise me? Fishnet stockings, though, come on. She looks cooler as a Banshee Knight. That's all I'm saying. Uh, the, the crowd loves Paige in it. That's because she was, like, the only one who did anything. Like, Natalia just spent the entire match on her ass, like, <laughs> getting destroyed by one well, of no, two. Paige, Paige was in there at the beginning, like, giving some offense to one to the Bellas. Yeah. I have a note here that says sexy pin, because she does the weird pin where she, like, crawls up the their pin. body. Yeah. Yep. Uh, but other than that, it was just, like, Natalia versus the two Bella twins, because Paige never got tagged in. No, I think she came in back once, didn't she, after that, briefly? I don't know. I don't remember. Yeah, it was like... I, like, I, I want to say, like, 30 seconds after Natalia was first in, Paige got tagged in again, and then it was just Natalia for the rest of it. Oh, yeah, they had, like, a little tag team spot. The, was, uh... the crowd just the crowd just didn't care about this match. They were chanting Olay. And I was like, <laughs> what is, I was like, is Sami Zayn going to come down? What's happening? <laughs> I didn't but, uh, care about this match. It was really bad. The, the, oh, the finish was so dumb, where it was, like, Nikki or Brie. I can't tell them apart. They're twins. That's not, like... Racist or Doesn't, sexist or anything. Didn't one of them have like a boob twins. job or something? Yeah, Nikki has a boob job, but I don't remember much of that night. I'm not going to be able to go, oh yeah, the one with big tits got the pin. <laughs> you have to be but, front um, on as well to see that, so. Yeah. 
It's like, I can't, I can't tell the Usos apart and they have face paint on either side of their faces. No. I think you're not meant to, though, are you? I, I think you are, though, because one of them has a tattoo on their chest. All oh, right. But, uh, they, wear, they wear shirts, though. Like, how would you know? They take them off because they're going to be look, looking sexy. All the kids <laughs> yes. that anyway, love them. What were you saying? <laughs> the, the finish of that match was done where one of the Bellas just hits Natalia with an elbow, a really stiff-looking elbow, and then that's it. One, two, three, win. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was super dumb. <laughs> JBL <laughs> let out the best line of the night, which was, according to my research, they've been twins for most of their life. Yes. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, didn't he also say something about like uh, Paige being a hot mess or something and then jump back on it I'm sure that Maybe, was one of the I... conversations was like she had called herself like a hot uh, goth mess or something on one of the oh, Total Divas yeah, to one be on of the commentators Divas. brought it up and was like that's what she called herself I'm not saying about that about her yeah it's like <laughs> it was great it's fucking super dumb the uh, after that match there was a promo backstage with some of the superstars about their thoughts entering the rumble and I like, you could hear the crowd reaction as certain people came out, like, Miz and Miz Dow had a segment where Miz was talking about how he's going to win the Rumble, and uh, Miz Dow would repeat the last word of the sentence, and, and yeah. Miz was like, I'm going to win the Rumble, and then Miz, then Miz Dow goes, I'm going to win the, win the Rumble, and Miz looks shocked that he said that, like, teasing <laughs> oh, that there's going to break up. But then when Roman Reigns comes up, the crowd are mysteriously muted, and you can't hear any of the, you know, can't hear any of the crowds in the background. <laughs> It was super dumb. Apparently, like, there was a lot of booing for any time Roman Reigns showed up. Like, I yeah. I was watching a stream and somebody who was at the Rumble talked about how bad it was in the crowd. And it doesn't come across. On, like, I watched it live. And on the network version, they've uh, dubbed out a lot of the booing and stuff. Yeah. So it's not the same as... There was a lot of as... muted roar. There wasn't... You couldn't really tell what they was like, saying, I guess. Yeah, I've, I've gone back to watch uh, the, the finish to the Royal Rumble match. And yet, it's not as loud as it was live. No, you couldn't even really make out what, like, I don't know. It was very just like, here's some noise. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to that in a second, because the next match was Brock Lesnar. Brock the Piss Lesnar against John oh, Cena and Seth great. Rollins. Oh, this was like the <laughs> I, highlight of the night by far. This I've got a lot of notes for this, we've got to get through it, come on. Uh, yeah, so John Cena comes out first. Fucking John Cena sucks chants echo throughout the entire <laughs> arena. It was amazing. Well, I didn't hear that either. Really? Next day. I don't know if they're gone or I just didn't have the blame up at that point. Oh, they're so good. John Cena tries to shill like his cum rag and everyone just boos as he runs down to the ring. <laughs> then, um... He does, though. He pulls out his little shirt or towel, whatever it is, holds it up to the camera, says something, and then runs off to the ring. Oh my god, your notes are the worst. Uh, yeah, they're, they're pretty bad. Uh, <laughs> next next up was uh, Seth Rollins. He got a massive pop. People love him. He came out with uh, Fucking Jane. Why? He came out with Jane J Security. Yep. Which is pretty cool. And then here comes the piss. Brock Lesnar comes out, massive pop. Everybody's losing their fucking minds. Hey, it, was, yeah. it was cool. What what do you think of Brock Lesnar? I uh, I think he looks terrifying. He's fucking terrifying. I, think I like he's, was... like the one wrestler that looks scary. The rest of them all look kind of like you know, jokes. Yeah, but he he pulled out so many German suplexes in that match. That's kind of like his thing now. After what he did to Cena at SummerSlam, it was it was I... really impressive. Like the things he did to, to Seth Rollins and Cena were quite. He obscene. just picks them up. Seth Rollins <laughs> doesn't them. know. He, Seth Rollins doesn't know how doesn't know how to take a suplex. He lands on his shoulder and it looks extremely painful every single time. Yeah, but there it was, uh, he, that was that's why I think it was fun to watch because I actually enjoyed the wrestling of it. Like just did watching you see, him getting thrown across the ring? Did you see Lesnar pick up both of the J and J security guys and suplex both of them at the same time? Yes, that was in my notes. He, it was he uh, like he picks them up on his shoulder and just tosses them across the ring. It was amazing. It was like, yeah. I was impressed. There are so but many... Not as impressive as what Cena does to them later, though. Hang on. Uh, oh, yeah, we'll get to in a second. There are so many suplexes uh, in my notes here. I have another German. It's like the third Reich in here. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, uh, Cena and Rollins try and mount some offense. And, you know, they get a couple of suplexes in. Cena hits the AA on Brock, and Brock only kicks out... No, Cena hits the AA on Brock. Let Rollin Rollins... Runs in to steal the pin, only gets a one count, which is pretty good. 
Oh yeah, yeah. That was like, like quite a while in as well, wasn't it? Like they'd yeah. been fighting for a decent period of time when that had happened. Yeah. Uh, Cena hits the five moves of Dooms twice to Rollins and people just boo. It was pretty good. <laughs> Brock Lesnar reminds me of Sundowner from Metal Gear Rising Revengeance because seemingly his health bar wasn't damaged at all. Like Cena yeah. hits Cena hits with three AAs and then Rollins hits a curb stomp on him and he still kicks out. It was amazing. But uh, I would say that, like, I don't know if Brock Lesnar always looked like this, but he did look like he was kind of dying at one point. Like, he was very, you know, he was red, bright red in the face, sweating profusely. And then oh, you would see the it. camera on, like, Cena, and he would be fine. That's, he would look that's, perfectly okay. <laughs> like, that's Lesnar in, like, every match. He's just getting yeah. super sweaty and red. Looked, but, uh, like, he fucking looked like a titan. That's what he looked like. <laughs> just red, massive muscle, just... Yeah. It was impressive. There was a... Uh... I don't know who it was, but somebody ripped off the Spanish announce table cover. That was Lesnar, yeah. Was it Lesnar? As soon yeah. as I saw that, I was like, okay, this is going to be awesome. It's Someone's going through that table. Yeah, because he pulled uh, out, you know, one of the little uh, screen things. Is that what they are? Oh, yeah, one, one of the monitors. Pulls out one, just throws it aside. He pulls out the other, throws it at the side of the ring. Or he throws the it at the steps and you see bits shatter off it. Yeah. yeah. I was like, oh, this is so badass. But, uh... There was a there was an awful moment where Cena puts uh, Lesnar through one of the barricades near the timekeeper zone. I was like, okay, we've seen this. Oh like, yeah, we see this in like every match now, or every like pay per view match. So, uh, but like, yeah. it was interesting because the commentators were very much talking like, you know, Rollins Cena are gonna have to team up to take him down, to take Lesnar down. But well, I, I, when they when I was watching, like, they all seemed to play their roles pretty well. Like every time Cena would get the leg up, Rollins would be an asshole and like pull him out of the ring by his foot or something. Yeah. Like, and then try to, like, you know, and try to destroy Lesnar and then get wiped out. Yeah, it they, was, all, it they was played really the good. roles really well. Like, it was in that sense. Lesnar uh, reminded me of the Terminator. He just kept getting up for more. It was great. Yeah, but, like, he would literally pick uh, Rollins up by, like, his ass and throw him out and then, like, actually fight Cena properly. Yeah. He didn't seem to have any care about, like, Rollins at any point in that match. Yeah. There was, uh, there was a bit where Cena hit. Lesnar with the stairs, and I was confused of why he would do that, because, like, Cena's about, oh, I can beat Brock Lesnar, no problem, just let me at him. And then he hits him with the stairs and knocks him onto the uh, Spanish announce table, which was kind of weird. But as soon as I saw Lesnar on that table, I was like, oh, God, Seth Rollins is going to kill himself, because there's no way <laughs> Cena's going to do anything with this. And then, sure enough, you see Seth Rollins climb up to the turnbuckle. Did you see the jump he did to hit Lesnar through the table? It looks really painful for him, yeah. Oh, it was massive. He jumped like... It was impressive. He jumped really high into the air, and I noticed that as he landed on Lesnar, he like span in midair, like he hit Lesnar, bounced off Lesnar as they were going through the table, and like did a 180. It was super <laughs> cool. It looked worse for him than it did for Lesnar. Yeah, but that was kind of the whole thing where, okay, now like, oh yeah, Lesnar's got a broken rib and he's going to lie down there. And they oh, had yeah. paramedics coming down. And that was good, Paul, though, because you could hear Paul Heyman screaming through the commentator's mic say, for a yeah. medic. It was, like, pretty good. Well well done. Yeah, I, I really like that. But that was that was kind of to give Rollins and Cena some one-on-one -on -one time, which was yeah. really good, actually. Like, Cena hits, like, a Batista bomb on Rollins and stuff. <laughs> but there, every time Cena, like, he, Cena hit the STFU, which is his uh, submission finisher, and then J&J &J Security ran in to save him. It was pretty cool. <sighs> Like, <laughs> then, what then Cena they... did to them was perhaps my favorite part of that match. That's like every Cena versus Rollins match, though, so it's kind of All right. lost it interest. It was badass to see for the first time, I guess. It it was cool to see the um, Shield 2.0 spots where Seth Rollins and J&J &J Security pick up uh, Cena oh, yeah. and hit the, pow the triple powerbomb like they used to do in the Shield. It was pretty yeah. good. A... <laughs> but yeah, the, it was the weird, right, because... About, there was camera angles when you could see J&J Security lying by the commentators outside of the ring, just in their suits where they'd been thrown from the very beginning, but they looked yeah. fine. And then by the time they got back in the ring at this point, they'd pulled off their jackets and ties and looked as if they'd been fighting <laughs> or something. It was ridiculous. Yeah, <laughs> like, it was pretty good. Uh, the spot you were talking about when, when uh, Cena picked up both uh, Jamie Noble and Joey Mercury up on his shoulders and hit the AA. Yeah. That's... Uh, yeah, that's, again, that's every match with Rollins and J&J Security up the sidelines. Because it was really impressive to see. Yeah. 
My only uh, notes on Seth Rollins, because I did it by person, was that he has nice yeah. tights. And I never really noticed that before. <laughs> he wears some, like, latex bondage suit, which is kind of weird. Yeah. But, uh... Yeah, he's... I thought he was kind of... I don't know. He did his part did... really well, I guess, but he didn't do a lot. Like, to me, it was really Cena that did everything. And then Lesnar... Did you not that... like the Phoenix Splash? Which was that? I don't know what these moves are. That was, are. like... That was like the back flip 180 into a front flip, and then he headbutted Cena in the groin because he like missed it. <laughs> no, I don't remember. It was it was pretty good. Like I started freaking the fuck out when I saw that. But then, like <laughs> out of nowhere, Lesnar runs in, like German suplexes, uh, Rollins out of the way so we can't pin Cena, and then Cena just kind of rolls out of the whip ring, and yeah. then it's just Lesnar and Rollins for a bit. Lesnar, or oh, Rollins hits the briefcase onto Lesnar twice, knocking him down, goes to hit the curb stomp, and Lesnar catches him into the uh, yeah. F5, oh, it hits great. it and wins. That It was a really cool finish. Yeah. Because, like, a, the, whole, really like the, whole, the whole idea was, oh, yeah, Brock Lesnar probably has, like, a broken rib, and yet he just runs in, destroys Rollins, and then walks out with the belts. Yeah. It was good. It was, I enjoyed the part where uh, John Cena threw him at Paul Heyman. And he was just, he was just running around the corner of the ring before uh, Brock Lesnar flew into the <laughs> stairs. Oh yeah, I remember it was, that. It was pretty good. I don't know. It was. I'm sure yeah. it was like planned completely, but it felt really uh, just watching Paul Heyman run and they almost get hit by these flying stairs. And Brock Lesnar was quite cool. Yeah, it felt. Uh, I don't know. It looked raw or something. Uh, yeah. And that was like the main event. Now it's time for the Royal Rumble. Yeah, this is where it all gets downhill. And I lose interest really quickly. How how hyped were you for the Royal Rumble? Oh, I don't know. I was I was really not expecting well. I don't know. I didn't really care. I, that's what I was excited for was the Rumble. But the triple threat like really impressed me in a way that I didn't think it would. Yeah. So like, I don't know. It just it was never going to be that exciting, was it really? Yeah. Because you know that most it only really matters in the last five minutes. So it's. I don't know. I, I yeah. thought most of the Royal Rumble was kind of shitty just boring to watch yeah it's like well we'll we'll go through the rumble a bit so the starting two were the miz and our truth which i thought was kind of weird to begin yeah, with i was but, bummed um, the miz was that early on because you knew it wasn't going to make it through well i knew miz wasn't going to win anyway yeah i know but, it would uh, have been cool to see him do something I like, we want Miz Dow chance started immediately, as soon as Miz started to wrestle our truth which was pretty good. Yeah. And, uh, the I first entrant was fucking, this. the first entrant was Bubba Ray Dudley, and I started marking the fuck out, because I had no, I, I thought he was still with TNA. Like, I was so confused of why he was there. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know who he was, but he seemed pretty cool. It was, uh, it was awesome to see. Like, Arch- Devon wasn't there, which was, like, uh, Bubba Ray's... I think it was half-brother, but he's black. And R-Truth right. kind of took that role where he was, like... Uh, That's he weird. told R-Truth to go get the tables, and then they 3D'd <laughs> Miz, and it... Oh, it was so cool. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, it's, he like, was that was, like... I thought he was good. He's I was been, surprised. like, carrying... He's been carrying TNA for, like, the longest time. Yeah. And but, uh... After that, it kind of goes downhill. Like, there's no, not really any notable entrance after that. It's like, oh yeah, Luke Harper. Oh, here comes Bray Wyatt. See, I was waiting for Bo Dallas to run in and have all four of them there, but I never. Happened. Oh, I really <laughs> wanted Bo Dallas to enter. It would have been awesome. I thought Bray Wyatt was pretty good though for the for the opening few like entrances and stuff. He he know. he looks he looked uh, remarkably strong. How he was just tossing people out. Yeah, it was like it was impressive to watch because like, and then he grabbed the mic or whatever, and he was waiting for the next person almost. Yeah, and, it, I found it weird that he was cutting a promo in the middle of the Royal Rumble. Yeah, but I I thought it was good to watch because then you have the next half hour of him just kind of rolling around in a corner getting punched. And it, was like, <laughs> it was just that's when it became well, not interesting. Was when you've just got like all these people who should be doing impressive moves. Well, uh, rolling around b- before before all this happened. Uh, Fucking Curtis Axel comes down, and I was like, okay, that's Curtis Axel. I thought he was in NXT now. Yeah. And then he gets attacked by Rowan for some reason, and then he just kind of limps off into the back. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I was dumb. It, it was cool seeing uh, the three, like Harper, 
Bray and Rowan in the ring, all three members of the Wyatt family. Yeah. And they both they both kind of turn on Bray, which was kind of cool. I was uh I was fucking bummed, right? So the boogeyman entered. Oh, the fucking boogeyman! I oh. had the coolest entrance of the night, I think. Have you uh, not well, seen the boogeyman before? No. Well, like, yes, he but not. I haven't seen him like actually do an entrance before. He used to come out and eat worms and stuff. Yeah, I've seen him doing that. But... Yeah. Oh, I fucking love the boogeyman. But like, it looked so cool, and like the fucking Wyatt did the spider walk or whatever, and then like I blinked to write something down in my notes, and then the match was over. Or, like, the boogeyman was thrown out or something. I literally blinked yeah. for the entire part where they came together and did something. Boogeyman and Bray together would have been fucking awesome because they're both kind of creepy dudes. Yeah, it should have been but so yeah, much cooler kind of... than it was. It was over in seconds. Yeah. But yeah, but, like, uh, uh, he looked really cool. Like, the one time I watched uh, Wyatt hit him, like, loads of shit flew off his face. I'm assuming it was, like, whatever was stuck onto him. Yeah. You could see it in the camera shot. It was pretty cool. Yeah. There's there's a lot of weird things like Sin Cara came out and got tossed out immediately by Bray, and fucking yeah. Zack Ryder came back and I <laughs> I started marking out for that, and then Ryder gets thrown out. I wrote down <sighs> is that the Miz question mark question mark oh no it's Zack Ryder because I didn't <laughs> recognize the song because I like I don't know the whole entrances and I'm just like oh he's wearing like white and black like the Miz colors or whatever I'm like oh no it's totally not him when he got closer yeah it was such a bummer for me oh, I yeah. thought the Miz is back already. Seeing that um, in my notes, I have woo woo woo, yes, <laughs> and then the next one is just Ryder buried lol. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> fucking after that though, fucking my boy Daniel Bryan came out. D Bry, D Bry, crowd start going mad. Everybody's doing the yes chants. He runs in, and just starts destroying Bray, which was really cool to see. After like nine months of surgery, he still got it. And I I don't watch SmackDown, so I've not seen his matches with Kane on there. Oh shit, he looks like Qui-Gon Jinn, the worst Jedi. Yeah! He looks like an <laughs> asshole, seriously. Like, if the beard's not bad enough, like, you know, the hair is dumb, the way they had it pulled back. He looks like such yeah. an asshole. It's really cool, though. Fucking, uh, Fandango comes down and people start Fandangoing, which is kind of cool. <laughs> that was, uh, awesome to see. And then, have... uh, Tyson Kidd, Tyson Kidd came down, he got a decent pop as well. Uh, Rusev was around then, wasn't he? Uh, Rusev comes in a little longer, or a little later, like, uh, Stardust comes out after oh, yeah. Kids, and then DDP comes back and everybody loses their mind, and then, that was pretty then cool. Rusev comes in. Yeah, Rusev was like, good. Do you like- I don't know, he actually, like, Ru- he didn't he get, like, six people out or something dumb? Or am I thinking of why? Uh, Wyatt got a lot of people out, right? So let's talk about that bullshit, right? Right now. <laughs> Daniel Bryan, fucking crowd love him. Everybody loves Daniel Bryan. Gets knocked out by fucking Bray Wyatt. Uh, yeah, well, like, didn't Daniel Bryan come back for, like, Smackdown or something the other day? Like, he's only just back, isn't he? Yeah, but... It's... <sighs> like, him it... getting thrown out was like, okay, yeah, so Roman Reigns is gonna win this thing. But, like, did people seriously expect for them? Like, wasn't, uh... Daniel Bryan's whole thing that he was like, you know, the underdog rising up, and that was like why people liked him. Yeah. Because he got there. So then why would they like waste all that time? Because they can do it again, and that's probably what they're going to do, isn't it? It's like have him face down all the odds to get big again. Right. Because people love that. Last year, Daniel Bryan was super over, and everybody was wanted him in the Rumble and to win, and fucking Batista won. Bryan wasn't even in the Rumble. And W. (laughs) Like. And then stuff happened, like CM Punk walked out, and basically people co- complained so much that WWE had to scrap their idea and shoehorn Bryan into the main event of WrestleMania, which he should have been there from the beginning. He should have been the one to win the Rumble last year. And everyone thought, oh, WWE can't be that stupid. He's obviously going to win this Rumble like he should have done last year, and no, he gets knocked out by fucking Bray Wyatt. I never thought that he would actually, like, why would you waste the opportunity, though, when you can just have him, like, get beaten down again and then rise again? Like, from a storytelling perspective, like, if the, if like if he, if he won everything, then you'd have the senior situation again in no time. But he doesn't win everything, that's the thing. It's but like... Is that not why people like him? Is that, like, he keeps getting cheated of shit, but always, like, fighting his way there and stuff? No, because WWE are stupid, like... They want Roman Reigns to be the next big guy in their company. He, they want him to be the next Cena. Daniel Bryan was never going to be the next Cena at all. 
but people love him. It's like, from what I've read, WrestleMania 31, it's going to be Sheamus against Daniel Bryan. I, I like Sheamus. He's cool. Oh, f- fuck you. No, fuck you. <laughs> right, we're moving on. I'm so, yeah, Daniel pale Bryan. with uh, ginger hair, so I like Sheamus, okay? Someone Daniel I Bryan to. gets thrown out. Daniel and Bryan looks hit. like an asshole. Shut up, we're carrying on. Shut up. Daniel Bryan gets thrown out. Crowd just start booing. It just kills all the momentum in the match. Like the, people keep, people still chant Daniel Bryan for like the next ten fifteen minutes. It's insane. You're right about it killing the momentum, but I don't necessarily think that has anything to do with crowd chants, because like the next half hour of that rumble was just like eight people running around on the floor punching each other and not going anywhere. Well, well, that's kind of it. Like uh, fucking Adam Rose comes out with the rosebuds at one point. Kofi oh, King that was comes hilarious. Ah. Right, so when I saw when I saw the rosebuds out there and Kofi Kingston was in the ring, I was like, "Okay, so Kofi's going to get caught by the rosebuds." Immediately, as I said that to myself, it happens. It's yeah. like it's so predictable. <laughs> but uh, it was cool though. Right? I don't know. I thought he was hilarious. But then he gets immediately knocked out by fucking Rusev because yeah, that's you know, what Rusev I thought was hilarious. Yeah. The the uh, so a website I go on had like before the Royal Rumble. What you do is you go to this website. Enter a random number generator between 1 and 30, and whichever number you get, you have to root for that person in the match. So oh, I, yeah. rolled a number, I rolled a number 19. So, you know, number 19's coming in next. 3, 2, 1. Fucking Roman Reigns stops walking down. <laughs> I was so pissed Should've off. Oh, my God. I, I was so pissed off. Roman Reigns comes in, and he looks so strong. Super strong. And he just goes and knocks everybody down. Didn't he wipe out, like, both of the uh, Dust Brothers? Yeah, he took out both Goldust and Stardust. Yeah. Crowd is just booing so much. Fuck it. Right. Then... Sorry, go on. I was going to say, uh, the crowd are booing. Like, you know, Big E comes down, nobody cares. He gets <laughs> tossed out. He doesn't, though. They're... He's in it for, Miz... like, 15 minutes. Like, Big E's just standing yeah, but... there punching people at the side of the ring for, like, 10 to 15 minutes. I don't remember much of that match, guy. Come on. That's the that's the funny part, is that he didn't get knocked out instantly. But, uh, yeah, fucking uh, Mizdow comes down, and the crowd lose their minds. Yeah. And Mizdow makes it, just, he's about to enter the ring, and Miz walks out behind him and tells him to go to the back. Because <laughs> he's gonna, the Miz is going to take Mizdow's place. Yeah. But uh, then uh, Mizdow comes in and gets eliminated pretty quickly, which kind of sucks. Like, this is what I mean, they blew so many things with Miz and Mizdow, like Miz and Mizdow should have been in the ring at the same time. Miz gets thrown out and then Mizdow tosses himself out to imitate Miz. If they yeah. wanted to keep the team together. That would have been, Miz, cool. that would have been Miz gets awesome. thrown, Or Miz gets thrown out and then Mizdow goes to throw himself over the top rope but then says no and goes back to fighting and that's how you break up the tag team. Yeah. It would have been, it would have been awesome. Cool. You've missed out a uh, perhaps the best comedy of the match when uh, one of them, I can't remember which, makes a joke about uh, Transformers because Rusev does like some weird, he rolls into a ball and like hits somebody in the corner of the ring. Really? And so one of the commentators freaks out saying that's what Autobots used to do, they used to roll into them. It's fucking, <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. And no, no, the other two clearly didn't get it because like, you know, like Autobots, that's what they used to do. And it just completely killed it. It was great. Yeah. I fucking thought oh, yeah. it was great. <laughs> I lost interest pretty quickly. Now, like, <laughs> Jack Swagger came out, and I Fucking spent the sucks. entire time... He's the worst thing. I was sat there just going, singing to myself, na 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 just singing his theme. Oh, he's bad. That's how uninterested I was in what happens. But, uh, yeah, nothing notable really happens. Like, Ryback comes out, and, you know, whatever. Then Kane comes out. He's fat. Whatever. Yeah. Kane fucking is just like, Master... fat, like Sorry, Karen. <laughs> I was going to say, Titty Master Dean Ambrose came out and people loved him. Uh, yeah, he was pretty cool. It's funny. Uh, him and Roman Reigns botched an elimination. They tried to take out Titus O'Neil. Like, Titus O'Neil enters and they both clothesline him. And he was supposed to go over the ropes and uh, get eliminated in one second to tie with Santino, Santino Morella's record. They All kind right. of fuck it up. So yeah. he gets eliminated in four seconds, and the commentary are like, whoa, did that tie Santino? Like, oh, we'll have to check, and they never got back to it. No, oh, I think they said in there that it was four seconds, but yeah. Like, really? I wondered what that yeah, was they... about, actually. He was totally supposed to be eliminated in one second, and they fucked it up. Yeah. Oh. He was still, yeah. like, surprisingly fast. 
Yeah. Bad News Barrett comes down and he was awesome. But he wasn't there for very long. No. Cesaro no, comes out and gets a massive interest, pop. Like, like nothing happened through all this time. Yeah, it's like the way I saw it, I knew Roman Reigns was winning because Wyatt, because, uh, Wyatt eliminated Brian. So when people like, you know, Ryback, Cesaro, Bad News Barrett, Ziggler, they all came out I could have been, you know, like, oh, they they have a chance to win this, but it's like, no, Roman Reigns is in the match. Still. He is winning this, yeah. Yeah. And there was an awful part where um, uh, Big Show and Kane teamed up and they just started eliminating everybody, like, <laughs> Big, Sh- Big Show hits his KO punch on Ziggler and just kind of tosses him over the ropes. That was the pretty same cool, with... I don't know. Like, when they, they do did the, the same with replay Ray, that, and then the same with uh, Ambrose. Oh, I don't know. When yeah, he took out I, Zig- I enjoyed the Ziggler takeout. I didn't really care much for the rest, but yeah, the way it's just like one that, swift um, punch. I like that Kane broke Shawn Michaels' record for most eliminations. I think he has like forty or forty-one yeah. eliminations now, yeah. which is kind of cool. Like, but uh, yeah, like the final four are Ambrose, who gets eliminated pretty, qu- pretty quickly, leaving um, Big Show, Kane, and Roman Reigns, and it's like. Okay, I totally see what's going to happen here. Roman Reigns is definitely winning this thing with these two in the ring with him. Yeah. Yeah, and then Big Show and Kane start teaming up, trying to take out Roman Reigns. It's like, the entire crowd... I don't know if you heard this on the network, but uh, all of the crowd are booing and they're chanting bullshit. <laughs> they're all going, that. bullshit, no. bullshit. And the commentary points out, they're all like, Obviously, uh, people are not very happy that Daniel Bryan was eliminated so early yeah, on. Yeah, I heard that. And there were there were also uh, we want refunds chants as well. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Big Show and Kane try to eliminate Roman. Then there's some dissension between Kane and Big Show when Big Show tries to toss Kane out as well. Yeah, they have a little fight and Roman knocks them both out of the ring. Yeah, and then he starts like celebrating and people are. I was so confused of why his music wasn't playing. No. It was, but, uh, yeah, it we'll was get... weird. It was like, like such a shitty ending, wasn't it? It wasn't no, even like he we'll... did, did it well. We'll we'll get to that in a second. So, uh, yeah, Big Show and Kane get thrown out, but then they run back in the ring and start to uh, attack Roman Reigns. And I was like, what what's even happening here? Yeah. And uh, fucking The Rock music hits and he runs down. And I was like, this could have been a cool surprise if they hadn't spoiled it in the pre-show. Pointing out, oh, The Rock's in Philadelphia. Maybe he'll show up in the Rumble. I like Twitter spoiled it for me. You saw, yeah. I think it was like Sin Cara was like making rock jokes about not finding rocks backstage <laughs> or something. I'm like, God damn it, you asshole. <laughs> this yeah. could have been good. But, uh, but yeah, Rock saves um, Roman Reigns, his weird... I don't know how they're related. I think they're cousins. cousins or, yeah. like sec- or second cousins. But they're trying to use The Rock to get Roman Reigns over. Anyway, Rock saves him. And I was still confused why there was no bell and no music. And I was like, wait a second, Curtis Axel was never eliminated. And I was like, man, Curtis Axel's going to come down and save the day. But no, uh, Rusev comes into the ring and yeah, I I find it funny that people were booing Roman Reigns, but they were cheering Rusev, who's this anti-Ameri- anti-American <laughs> yeah. Russian, while they're in the hometown, like the birthplace of, of America, Philadelphia. People are cheering for this rush, this like anti-American guy to win, but no, he gets thrown over and bell rings. Roman's music hits, and oh. I wish Rusev had won that. Like I know it would never would have happened, like under any odds. But if he just managed to do it, like wipe out the Rock yeah. as well, like that would have just changed the entire thing, wouldn't it? Yeah. So do you want? Do you want to hear my very drunk notes that I've got here? I I, I know where I... those notes go, and I don't think that's fit for air. It's all right. I've got Rusev comes in. Please, Rusev, save us. No, no, no. Please, God, no. That's when he was eliminated. Then, Raman Reigns wins, lol. Fuck you. What about Axel? And uh, that's, that's pretty much it. Like, the, the Rock comes in and raises Roman's hands. And the crowd are booing so loud that the Rock, like, gets really pissed off over this. Like, there's yeah. tons of screenshots of him looking really annoyed at everybody booing them. Fucking Roman Reigns was bleeding by the end of that match. Do you know how he was bleeding? No, no. Dean Ambrose punched him in the mouth. Oh, nice. <laughs> it looks quite I, bad as well. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know who it was, but somebody enters and, like, 
uh, like Ziggler, Bad News Barrett, Ambrose, uh, Roman, and somebody else all go to like start attacking him as soon as he enters. I think it was Big Show. Yeah. And Ambrose is there wailing on like Big Show's back, and as he pulls his hand back, he hits Roman straight in the face. <laughs> it was like at one point <laughs> it was all smeared up his cheek, and it looked quite awful. Yeah. But, yeah. That would have been yeah, more impressive if they just gone all that right and beat the shit out of Roman Reigns before the ending. So he was just like completely bloodied from head to toe. He, like Jesus, he died for us in this. <laughs> I'm not even going to go yeah. there. I'm not even going to go there. My final notes yeah. were Stephanie's dress was the worst because she looked awful in that purple dress. Just saying. My, I didn't even pay attention. My notes here are authority stomped. Lol. Rock still trying to put over ramen. Fuck you, WWE. <laughs> ramen sucks. But, uh, yeah, so what did you think of the pay-per-view? Uh, I enjoyed the triple threat. Is that what it called? Was it three-way? What was it called? It it was a triple threat. Triple threat, yeah. I really enjoyed that. It was, um, yeah, I thought it was, like, um, some of the, the best non-NXT I've watched. This, the card was so stupid. It was, like, every match was a tag match except the main events. Yeah. It's like, honestly, who wants to see... The New Day versus Team Cat, really. <laughs> I didn't. I went out my way to avoid that. Who wants to see the New Age Outlaws versus the Ascension? I don't Nobody. know who either of those people who, are. Who wants to see the Usos? Nobody. <laughs> who wants to see a Divas tag match? Nobody. I was surprised, though. Like, uh, I thought that the Royal Rumble would be at its best when you've got like a lot of wrestlers in ring. But I yeah. guess I never thought of this, but they don't really actually do anything when there's that many. There's no impressive no. moves or anything. It's, you know. No, they'll be, like, towards the middle of a rumble, or even the end of it, there'll be, like, several guys in the ring, and then the next person to come in will run in, hit all of his signature moves and finishes, and then get attacked by somebody already in the ring, and yeah. then they'll, you know, beat each other up for a little until the next guy comes in to hit his moves. But that's, like, how... It, every time the camera pulled out to show the next person ent entering, it was, like, just two people in each corner just punching each other. Every time, yep. like it was. That's. I I wasn't expecting for like the middle half of that thing to be so boring. Like I enjoyed the opening, you know, with a uh, fucking Bubba Del Rey or whatever his name was, like Bubba Ray Dudley. When it was really focused on like these two, perhaps three people are going to kick the shit out of each other. I uh, it was interesting to watch, but yeah, like the middle yeah. half was just so boring. The Royal Rumble is perhaps my favorite pay per view. Like this is the first one I've actually watched live, but before it, like. Back when I was into wrestling in, like, you know, Nom. primary, you primary Nom. school, I still remember going to my friend's house and he would, like, tape Royal Rumbles and stuff and we would sit there and watch them. It was, oh, it was great. Yeah. But, yeah, it, it wasn't a good pay-per-view. Like, the Royal Rumble match itself was awful because it was so clear that Roman Reigns was winning it. Yeah, it was just, uh, it was pretty yeah, boring. Even, I don't know. Yeah. but I uh, didn't even have the yeah. excitement of being drunk. That that was an excitement I was feeling. <laughs> no. But um, but yeah, yeah it's uh, fucking Stephanie Roman Reigns needs to get a new dress. But yeah, Karen. Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 31. Can't Hooray. wait. I watched that I... little uh, promo. I guess it's I don't know if it's a promo or not, but like the weird thing with like Paul Heyman, Brock Lesnar, and Roman Reigns sitting in a room. Was that? Oh, I've I've not seen that. That, that was um. So, the Monday Night Raw after the Royal Rumble was cancelled because of harsh weather. And yeah. so, basically, what they did is they had, like, weird uh, interview segments in the WWE headquarters, because that's where, that's the city they were in to do Raw that week. Yeah. But they also went and showed the Royal Rumble match and the Triple Threat match on free TV, which is kind of like a big fuck you to people who have gone off and bought the network or bought the pay-per-view to watch this thing, and they're giving yeah. it away for free. Which is I guess, kind but of at dumb, the same but... time, like, they had to cancel their actual programming, so... Yeah. You know, uh, no, I'm I not going to cancel it. my subscription because of that, but I bet, like... I was about to bring that up. Fucking Sky so, would get uh, really pissed. After the Royal Rumble, the WWE Network's cancel page got overloaded and crashed because so many people were canceling their network subscriptions. That's so dumb. Like, the I, whole thing, like, I, told... I know people were upset, but, like, I saw, like, tweets to the the idea that, like... Oh, well, we've no. This was the worst thing ever, and we knew it was going to happen for months. So, like, why are you shocked that Roman Reigns won? And because people, like, I can say this as a fan as well. 
we didn't think WWE was stupid enough to let Roman Reigns win. We knew it was happening, but we were like, no, there's no way. Like, everybody, they must know that nobody wants to see Brock Lesnar face Roman Reigns. There's, there's no way. And sure enough, that's exactly what they're going for. Yeah, I, I, it always annoys me, though, because I'm, I mean, I haven't watched enough wrestling to know whether it's like, oh, this is just a bad move or something. But whenever it's like, oh, well, this person should have won. And then it's like, well, you say that every time. And it's, it's annoying because I don't think Daniel Bryan is interesting. Anything I've seen of him has been interesting. So it's like when everybody's like, oh, well, Daniel Bryan should have won. Like, well, it wouldn't really make sense for him to come back after injury after so long and then just instantly win like this pay-per-view straight off. Like from but their perspective, that... I don't think that would make sense. And if the crowd always got what they wanted, then it would it would be like Cena all over again, but not Cena. But that's kind of like the storybook ending for Daniel Bryan where it's like he's come back. He finally gets into the main event of WrestleMania, which he should have won. He should have gotten into by the Royal Rumble anyway last year, but he didn't, wins the title, has to go out for surgery, comes back, wins an actual rumble, and then gets into the main events. And then it's what? Like, like, people want him to win that then? But, like, you can't just, like, go from having nothing to everything all over again. Yeah, I guess. Like, I I don't really care for Daniel Bryan, but I'd be much more interested in, like, I don't know, The Underdog Part 2. Because that, that seems more interesting to me than him just coming in and winning. And then where do you go from there? The trouble is, WWE, WWE don't want Daniel Bryan as their next guy. They want Roman Reigns, and people don't like Roman Reigns, yeah. which is the problem. So for them to go, fuck you, we don't care what you want, Roman Reigns is winning anyway, kind of sucks. Yeah, I think Roman Reigns is boring. But I think for Daniel Bryan to have won that would have been like so short-sighted on their behalf. Because then, like, where do you go? Yeah. Like, you have to have the character people like fighting against the odds, don't you? Ultimately. But but like I said, WWE don't care about Daniel Bryan. Like, they're going to stick in with Sheamus in a match nobody cares about at the next WrestleMania. It's like, why? Yeah. It's it's weird, because, like, I don't know. I, think, I don't think Daniel Bryan works as a face of the WWE. Like, John Cena looks like an American wrestler. Daniel Bryan does not. Well, that Which was it? the whole thing with Daniel Bryan, where it's like, he isn't what they want, but... He isn't what the WWE wants, but he's what the fans want. I, just, I think it's more interesting for him not to win. I don't think it's interesting for Roman Reigns to win, though, either. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I just think Roman Reigns is super boring. It doesn't matter how you spin it. I'd have much rather had, like, Dean Ambrose there or something. Like, him versus uh, Brock Lesnar would be far more interesting to me. Again, like, it's not an issue of people hate Roman Reigns, it's an issue of people don't want Roman Reigns, like, he's not ready for to be the next big guy. That's yeah. the problem. I know, just every solution but, I've seen on the internet is, oh, well, Daniel Bryan should be there. It's like, well, that wouldn't really work in the long run. Unless they did some, like, like, major work to it. Well, they had to shoehorn him into, the, into it last year, but yeah, it's like, you think in that rumble there were people like Dolph Ziggler, Bad News Barrett, you know, Ray Wyatt, even. Uh, did I say Dean Ambrose? I can't remember. I don't know. Any of those people would have been more interesting. Like, yeah, exactly. Ray they Wyatt so should have got it, because he like, destroyed everyone for the first half of the thing. And then no, spent the Bray second Wyatt's half just running around on the floor. The yeah. yeah. It felt like it was, it was bad. It's just like people's reaction was so... <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It's the whole pay-per-view in itself wasn't interesting. The triple no. threat match was. That was kind of like the only thing that was decent on there, and it's not enough to save the pay-per-view. No. Triple threat I'm was just really good, glad though. People should just go and watch I... that. But... Yeah, I'm just glad that... I. Uh, by the way, I was totally going to cancel my network subscription as well. <laughs> because it's like... WWE need to see that we don't want Roman Reigns. And then but what? Then we I subscribe like... before WrestleMania. Like... What's the difference? There are places I have found online with no effort to watch all the wrestling I want for free. And yet yeah. I will still go ahead and subscribe to the network because I wanted to support them. It's not an issue of, oh, I don't want to pay for it. I'm happy to pay for it if they're going to put something good out. I was totally going to unsubscribe, but then I realized, oh, they have that WrestleMania or the WWE 24 like documentary about WrestleMania 30. And I was like, okay, that that comes tomorrow. Which is you know Monday nights. No, I heard that. I wanted to watch that. I've watched like twenty minutes of it before this, and it's like not interesting at all. 
Really? <laughs> yeah. No, I, I heard it was like, good, but I haven't watched it myself. I wanted more backstage stuff, and it's kind of just random stuff about like the Ultimate Warrior and stuff. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that that and uh, NXT NXT is NXT is the only thing keeping me on the network now. God, NXT is great. I was not prepared for how much <sighs> I enjoy that. I I can't wait for the next pay per view no. or the next uh, NXT special. That's the only reason I'm keeping my network subscription. I can't wait for the next NXT. Like, it's just so much more interesting and short, and it's I, like just the parts I think are interesting about it. Also, I'm helps so happy I don't know who got, anyone is. But. I'm so happy that I got my Finn Balor shirt. Like, yeah. I got that on. That got delivered on Monday morning when I was like still really hungover. <laughs> when you were. It wasn't good, but. <laughs> yeah. When I was dying. Yeah, dying of right. something. But, uh. Yeah, NXT far right, better than WWE. Out, to close this out, rate that pay per view, Kyle. Out of what? Are we using our five points, Kyle? I. Sure. Oh. Give it out of five stars. I think we should just add can... a wrestling review section for each pay per view to the site. Like, no Maybe. text, just just a score. Like, <laughs> no justification <laughs> whatsoever. Or just one image, one yeah. image and a score. I, a two out of five. It was poor, but you I enjoyed can't... bits of it. You can do halves and quarter stars as well. That no, fuck anything. it. No, you can't. It's five points. All or nothing. Yep, fair enough. I would totally give it two stars. Two, yeah. The triple threat was really good, but... Yeah. That's not enough to save it. Yeah. Yeah, it was kind of disappointing. They should have got Hashtag. the Miz back in there again. The Miz should have won that fucking thing from the beginning. Shut up. No. <laughs> Alright, I think they'll do it then. Uh, Hashtag cancel WWE Network trending worldwide. Yeah, fucking worldwide on tailored tweets. On uh, tweets, I'm sure. No, it totally was worldwide. Yeah, I, I saw. To at the minute, my hashtag is uh, my most trending one is Fantastic Four. So enjoy that thought. <laughs> <laughs> and then WWE yeah, that, 24 is just below it. So weird, that but yeah. <laughs> will do us. We are we going to do one for an, the next NXT special? Damn right. Sounds more interesting awesome. than this thing. Yep. Awesome. Okay, okay, uh, see you then. Auf Wiedersehen.